Good morning, everybody, and welcome to English 101 with David Hancock. I am David Hancock. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about IE, EG, and then we're going to have a special guest appearance from ETC. All right, so there are three things in the English language that are very similar. I mean, there are many, many more things than three, but we're going to focus on three things in the English language today that are very similar, have very similar functions, but do different things. And there's a lot of confusion. As a professional writer for my day job, I see people misusing these all the time. I have seen people misuse these almost on a daily basis for 15 years. So let's, let me see if I can help you understand a little bit about the differences between IE, EG, and ETC. So first, IE is short for Latin, is a Latin abbreviation. It stands for id est. So the I is id and the E is est. And in Latin to English, the translation is very direct. It simply means that is. So id est means that is. IE is used to clarify. So an example of that would be something like, if you have a sentence and you're saying, uh, my windowsill has a number of herbs, i.e. basil, thyme, and oregano. So the way you would present that is say, my windowsill has a number of herbs, parentheses, i dot e comma, i.e. are italics because they're Latin, so you have to make them italics because they are not an English word. In English writing, if you're using a word from another language, you make it italicized. That's why IE always needs to be italicized. So italics, I dot E dot comma, use the I dot, the periods indicate its abbreviation. The comma is there because of the function of the part of speech, which is to say that um, IE is going to introduce this list. Its function is that it is uh, it's an adverbial, and adverbials need to be separated by commas. So you have IE, comma, and then the herbs that you're going to list, clothes parentheses, okay? So, and then the period for that, if that's the end of your sentence, goes inside of the parentheses. Um, if what, the other, the, the next similar option would be to say, I have a number of herbs on my windowsill, e.g., basil, thyme, and oregano. So the presentation for that would be very similar. I have a number of herbs in my windowsill, parentheses, E period, G period, EG again, italicized, comma. EG stands for exempla gratia. That's the Latin word for it. And in English, it translates to, for example. So EG period, uh, E period, G period, comma, basil, thyme, oregano, period, parentheses, or basal thyme and oregano. Two very similar sounding sentences. They mean different things. With the IE example, which stands for that is, what you say when you write it that way is these are the three herbs that I have on my windowsill. That's it. Those are the only three. With the EG, which means exempla gratia, for example, what you're saying is these are three of the herbs. You could have 45 other herbs as well. You could have chives and rue and purple basil. I, I don't know. Take a pick of all the different herbs up there. So what, um, what you're doing with IE is saying this is a complete list. With EG, you're saying these are examples that are part of the list. So those are the differences between those two. So what about etc.? Etc. is a word that means, and there are other things, and it's abbreviated as ETC. In formal writing, never abbreviate it ETC, and never use etc. So those are the two rules for etc. in formal writing. If you're just shooting a text to your friends, by all means, use it like crazy. That's fine. But with formal and professional writing, you never actually for any reason want to use etc. Here's why. If you say, I have many herbs on my shelves, or on my windowsill, such as basil, thyme, and oregano, etc., 
what etc. says to the reader is, I ran out of ideas, but I want it to sound like I have more ideas. That's the impression that readers get when they see etc. It's an using etc undermines your authority as a writer in whatever it is that you want to say. So uh, there are there are a couple of times you should use etc. If you're talking to friends informally, it's fine. If you don't want people to take you seriously, it's fine. If you're writing some some satire or something you know, it's intended to be funny, it's fine. But if you're writing an essay, or if you're writing an email to a boss, or a document for a client, or even an internal document for colleagues, don't ever use etc. It, like I said, it undermines what you said. It makes it sound like you don't know as much about what you're talking about as you want people to think you do. And it also, gives your documents a um, lack of specificity that undermines what you're trying to say. So those are the three different very similar things, i.e., which means id est, e.g., which means exempla gratia, and etc., which you should never for any reason use. And just remember with i.e., which means that is, directly, when you abbreviate it, it's i period, e period, comma, and then the i and the e are italicized. With eg, which means exempla gratia, which is for example, exactly means for example, it's e period, g period, comma, and the e and the g are italicized. ie and eg, once you understand what the Latin words mean and what the translations in English mean, become a whole lot easier. That is, is a complete list. eg is a partial list, for example. And by the way, if you ever feel like you're going to use EG and etc., cetera, um, don't. Don't for any reason. That is, that is even worse than just using etc. cetera. So um, that, is, that is it. E IE versus EG and etc. cetera. And the, the very simple rules that should help you remember how to use them and how to use them correctly. Have a good day, everybody.